we're going to talk about oracles here because data is hard to come by in a traditional financial system. It's hard to come by in crypto because it's such a vast landscape. So when we're talking about oracles, what do you really mean? And what does it mean for the universe of smart contracts that need that external data from uh, the real world services that really provide that gateway um, to each other? Sure. First off, thanks so much for having me. Um, on blockchains, as you mentioned, we've got smart contracts, and the smart contracts will execute rules-based decision criteria that can move something of value. So it could be Bitcoins, it could be Ethereum. Um, and when they are doing this, there's no third-party intermediary that's going to make any judgment calls. So they're dependent upon the inputs, and that inputs come from data. Um, and so that data is, the, 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 the quality of that data is paramount. And so Oracle networks provide a way to get high quality data that's very trustworthy. And the way that they do that is by having multiple contributors distribute that data directly on chain and it becomes very robust and resilient. Now, how does this really help big institutions, high frequency traders really engage with the crypto universe with a lot more rigor? Yeah, so what's really cool about the Pith Network is it has attracted some of the largest trading firms and exchanges to contribute their data directly onto the blockchain. We think about the Pith Network as being really high quality infrastructure that can power the next generation of decentralized applications um, and power the growth of Web3. So it's really the tooling that large trading firms and exchanges come to expect to make this institutional grade so that they can participate in the future. You know, it's interesting because when you think about how it used to work, data is proprietary. <laughs> data is something that not a lot of people like to traditionally share. So what do these firms get out of it by starting to share data and starting to amass more data altogether? That's a great question. So there's a reward mechanism within the Pith Network where the data providers are incentivized to provide that data on chain. Um, and what has been very exciting is in a similar capacity to how Airbnb has enabled an entire new inventory of places to stay. The Pith Network has opened up and unlocked reserves of, of data that came from trading firms that never ever distributed it for external use before. Um, some of the participants include Jump Trading, Jane Street, Susquehanna, and they're contributing their data directly on chain. And this is something that they've never once have used externally before, so it's very cool. Mike, you used to work at Morgan Stanley, and you know when you look at this kind of high-frequency trading world, all those companies that you said that you work with, like Jane Street, Susquehanna, why is it that high-frequency trading firms are more likely to engage with this universe than a, a large firm like Morgan Stanley? You see some of those big houses starting to trade in crypto, but it's really at the margins. Yeah, I agree. I think that the first movers tend to be ones that have um, smaller committees around where they can enter into markets. Um, so these are really the nimble firms, um, the ones that get in early. They're comfortable with both the cryptography risk as well as potentially some regulatory risks. Um, and then navigating that landscape is never easy, but it's a calculated risk that they have to take. For the banks, I think that they need to get a little bit more comfortable with the caliber and the scale of risks that they're going to get into. And I think they're making a lot of progress, as you mentioned. Um, and we will expect to see them come in over time. And what would it take, do you think, for decentralized finance to do everything that you would see in the tra a traditional financial system? Yeah, I think it's going to take a lot of development. Um, there's some things that crypto does really well, which is like you know sending things around the world of value um, with low friction um, and low fees. Um, and then there's some things that in, in centralized finance, it does really well. For instance, privacy. Everything is fully public on uh, on blockchains, and that's not necessarily the best thing for um, like a trading engine or for um, you to send like your Venmo account and have everything be public. Um, so I think that we're going to see better technology emerge, um, and this infrastructure tooling is really designed to allow people to build stuff. And, and build stuff that can compete with the real world of centralized finance. I'd love for you to talk about your work also with certain blockchains, particularly Solana. Of course, we've come off the merge. We were talking a little earlier this week to Anatoly Yakovenko. You know, what is it, what kind of data do you have? What kind of decisions are you making as this ecosystem evolves to know what's going to be more dominant moving forward? Yeah, so Pith started its life about a year ago on, on the Solana blockchain. and it became very quickly the canonical oracle to be used on chain. 
uh, over 95% of the applications are securing their data with, the, with that network. Um, and Pith is now going multi-chain, and it's really just, if you think about these chains being similar to operating systems, you want to have the best possible toolings to attract users to build applications on these operating systems. Um, and so having Pith available on chain is a very important component um, for these, these layer ones to compete with one another. So Pith goes to all the EVM chains now and will ex extend to the, the, the new ones, some with uh, competitive aspects to Solana using different languages as well. I have to admit, Mike, a data oracle sounds a bit like a mythical creature. So <laughs> what exactly, what is the function that you serve in this community? What kind of data are we talking about here? You know, what is the ultimate goal? Yeah, it does sound like a mythical creature. The name does come from Greek mythology, and Pith comes from Pythia, so um, there are ties in there. But today, um, the, the Pith data uh, spans the sector of crypto, U.S. equities, FX, metals. Um, so we've got a bit of everything. You can see the price of Apple updating on chain every 400 milliseconds and being used by anybody. Um, but you can go on the, on the website and see this type of information. We expect to have that scale out to other categories if people are interested in using them in smart contracts.